Phil. So happy to see you, Mike. So how are you? How are you? Yeah, very well. More or less. How many hounds have you got out today? Uh, I've got 20 and a half couple here. Yeah. So 41. Steady! Come back here. Come up! This is rather exciting, very different. Yeah, they've never been up here before. Not in my time anyway. So. So this would have been an important week for you, the puppy show. Certainly would last Saturday, yeah, would have been the yeah. the busiest yeah, week and day of the year and nice, you know, lovely social gathering. Yeah. How many puppies have you got this year? Well actually, we had a bit of a strange time. We've actually only had three, so it's okay. of all the years. This was the one to have. Next year will be a biggie. We've already yeah. got yeah. got a litter of seven and another another due next week. So now, when I, when I first arrived, I was a puppy walker. I looked after Grafton. You did indeed. And and how how many of Grafton's grandchildren and great-grandchildren? Many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. <laughs> his last surviving son is Captain. Yeah. Captain. He's an old man when he fathered yeah. him, so he's, he's actually in his prime still. Yeah. Uh, and then all the puppies actually from last year and the two previous years were his great-grandchildren right. from his daughters, his granddaughters, sorry. Yeah. Peevish and Pebble, there's Pebble. And Peevish there. Yeah, they, they had had litters the previous year. Um, do you want to come join me? I'm, Absolutely. I'm off to, to, see, I'm off to Turl, see a yeah. chemistry look experiment. Um, the best way through is really just to take the shortcut, go through the marble hall. Absolutely, go for it. Well, the, the every year with, recently we've uh, reenacted uh, something they did in the uh, early 80s at up at the banisters. Right. Right. Straight through the house, and they behave themselves there. So let's hope they don't disgrace themselves here. Right, I'm going to follow you. So you lead the way, and we'll go through. Grand. Come on in. No cocking your legs on any statues. <laughs> Thank you. Daddy. Good morning, James. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're, you're feeding my friend, the bearded dragon, who came all the way from Australia, where his ancestors did. He was bred in captivity. How is he? Very well, very well. Missing the company, I think, of the Stoics who feed him. Good. But at least I've given him some, some of his worms. Yeah. Keep him happy. And you're happy here in the, the Worsley Science Centre. You've got an experiment that you're going to show us. In fact, a few experiments you're going to show us in a minute. Yes, with pleasure. Good, we're yeah. looking forward to that. Before we go upstairs, I'm just going to read out a few of the, the week's announcements. Uh, first up, we're going to do the Cheshire Awards. Uh, Izzy Pratap completed a 200 kilometre challenge. Uh, this consisted of running, walking and cycling. And she was raising money for the care workers charity. Uh, Izzy and her four younger siblings completed a grand total of 310 kilometres raising more than £2,000. So, uh, excellent work from Izzy and her family. Uh, next up, uh, we have Rhea Vancouver. Uh, Rhea is about to set herself a challenge of walking uh, 18 kilometres in high heels across the streets of London on the 20th of June. This is for the Charlie Waller uh, Memorial Trust. And this is uh, uh, promoting a good uh, mental health, which of course is such a, an important issue during the, uh, the lockdown. Uh, she's already raised £14,000 and the grand total they want to raise is £33,000. Uh, they're doing this in memory of their good friend Katia, who would have been 18 on the 7th of June. And if you want to find out more about what Rhea and her friends are doing, there's an Instagram page called Doing It For Katsu. Uh, so really good luck on the 20th of June. We've also got some commendations. Uh, Connie Brooks uh, for media, uh, Jolly Costa, Costco for music and philosophy and religion. We have Udo Ekpacham and Aris Hatsi Stefanis. And finally, Archie McParland. Now, just looking around, we've got uh, an axolotl here. We've got our friend, the very well-behaved uh, bearded dragon, but perhaps the most interesting artefact in, in this foyer is the elephant bird egg. Let's go and have a look at it and I'll just tell you a little bit more about why it's so significant. So James and Mr. Bearded Dragon, follow me. Now this is a, an amazing specimen because I think it's one of only six 
elephant bird eggs in the world that is completely intact. T tell, tell us about how it came to Stowe how, and how did it come into this building? There were some Stoics in the 1950s who found it in a packing case um, in one of the temples and curious, they thought it looked like a rugby ball <laughs> so they, they played around uh, on the south front with it and uh, eventually a mist pass took it into the lake and uh, then it was supper time I think so they left it in the lake and it was found the next morning by one of the masters floating around on the lake. And who identified it as something quite unique. Yeah, luckily knowing what it was. Yeah, and the elephant bird became extinct around 1200, um, was a native of Madagascar. Yeah. The nearest relative to the elephant bird today would be what sort of animal? Ostrich. Ostrich. Sort of emu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is, how, how tall would an elephant bird be? About, about three metres, so one oh. and a half of you. Okay, so that's <laughs> nine, nine feet, eight inches. Just a little bit taller than we are, really. Yep. Yep. Um, and this, this is um, 180 times bigger than the chicken egg that we can see here. So uh, a pretty mighty feat to, to lay this particular egg. Um, there's a little bit of um, DNA in here. So could we have our own Jurassic Park one day? Well, with the advances at the moment, absolutely. It would be lovely to have um, the, the, the real offspring of yeah. <laughs> the egg running around, so to speak. A slightly terrifying concept, but who knows? After lockdown, Jurassic Park and Stowe, here we come. Tell, tell us about Grace, because we are going to bring the parent of this egg to Stowe, aren't we? We've, we've had, uh, being made up in China at the moment, is um, a replica of an elephant bird skeleton. So it'll be yeah. sitting in here to welcome everybody in. Fantastic. And they've called her Grace. There isn't one in the world, so they've had to do quite <laughs> a lot of research to work it out. And so this will be two scale, life size? This will be life size. Try, we've tried to get the right um, proportions and the sort of angle. Uh, so it'll be amazing to see the actual real skeleton, well, oh. uh, not the real skeleton, but uh, a replica of uh, the real bird. Now, you'll be very pleased to hear that I'm not going to pass it to you <laughs> with the, the bearded dragon. I'm going to put it very carefully and gingerly <laughs> back in its case, and we're going to go upstairs to your laboratory. There we are. Excellent. Do you want to pick Mr Bearded Dragon home, and we'll go upstairs. Okay. We should always end term with a bang, and it's vital we do so, especially as we say goodbye to the upper sixth and the fifth form, who've done such an amazing job here at Stowe and online, and it's been a pleasure to teach them with their online presence too. As this explodes, think, there are more atoms in there than all the people who've ever lived on Earth, not just at the moment, but throughout history. This number of atoms meet and rearrange with oxygen atoms in a split second. Have a good end of term. James, thank you so much and uh, what a great lesson and I think you're about to actually teach another lesson but this is going to be from your garden shed where you broadcast every day. So let's go to your garden shed and see what you get, get up to there. Thanks for so this is a behind the scenes with our distance learning. Uh, I'm just about to start a lesson uh, online with some live demonstrations as normal. So please come on in. While, that, while that's going on, we're just getting sorted here. Um, it's important that you cast your mind back to acids, bases and salts. George, any idea? Other indicators? Sorry? Phenyl phthalene. Good, there's phenyl phthalene. Good, and there's one more. Litmus. 
good. And there's litmus as well. Goodbye. Thank you for joining our lesson. It was a pleasure to have you and uh, see the online lesson in action.